to Light Time on Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we're talking about Virgin Sinners. Virgin Sinner stars Caitlin Bernard, Bren Llewellyn, Bren Coates, Keelani Elizabeth Rose, and Carly Fawcett. Good old Carly Fawcett. Now, on the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no. Thank you. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Put a cork in it. (sighs) Sorry. Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and come on back, because I'm going to do a quick little recap starting now. Grace is a popular girl of seven mean girls, which seems excessive. There are seven because they are known around their Catholic high school as the seven deadly sins. Grace is lust and is in a lesbian relationship with Tori, who is wrath. Katie is greed and is rich AF. Ruby is sloth because she is lazy. Molly is gluttony because she eats her feelings. And Aubrey is pride. Aubrey is also dead at the beginning of the movie and is the voiceover narrator. I can relate. Grace's minister father finds out about the nicknames and is horrified. He forbids his daughter from hanging out with her friends and her boyfriend, Kit, which really isn't a punishment because Grace is queer. Grace doesn't listen to her dad and joins a Satan-worshipping cult. Quite the pivot, Grace. The girls find out that Aubrey is the one who leaked the nicknames to Grace's dad and decide to punish her by wearing freaky masks and kidnapping her. Deep in the woods, Aubrey fights for her life and ends up dead at the bottom of the lake. Or so it seems. Speaking of death, the seven deadly sin girls are unceremoniously picked off one by one as the movie continues. All the bodies are found with roses. What is this, The Bachelor? Eventually, the only girls left are Tracy and Tori. They burn Audrey's journal and are surprised to learn that Aubrey is alive. I just said Audrey and Aubrey. Whatever this woman's name is. Whatever this woman's name is, she faked her death and talked to God. Then, she plays a deranged version of She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not. Kill you. Kill you not. Kill you. Kill you not. Kill you. (gasps) Shut up! This is my favorite! A shootout happens, killing the sheriff. Tori and Grace are taken in for questioning, and the movie lamely ends with Aubrey's voiceover saying the first Corinthians. There is no resolution and no consequences for the past hour and a half of this movie. And that is The Virgin Sinners. So this movie was, of course, a lifetime acquisition, originally entitled The Sinners, directed and written by Courtney Page, who is also an actress, so I liked that. But as far as a lifetime acquisition goes, this one left a lot to be desired. The premise of The Seven Deadly Sins was interesting and felt a little bit like Virgin Suicides meets Mean Girls type of vibe, which sounds like it would be something I would so be here for. But... Since the movie was on Lifetime, I feel like it was cut for time or something. Like, things weren't necessarily gelling together, or they cut out some murder sequences that just weren't really necessary. It just seemed like everything was a little bit rushed, and we were just doing the best with what we had. The title, The Virgin Sinners, is very salacious, and of course, Lifetime loves a good title, so they went with that, and it made the movie one of the more popular on my blog, but the substance just wasn't there. Interestingly enough, this movie had Lachlan Monroe, and most people won't know the name, but they'll definitely know the face. He started out in movies in the 90s, and he literally has been in so many movies as that asshole kind of guy, like a like a less successful Ryan Reynolds. Maybe not less successful, just less famous, because the man is in every movie you could ever think of. I like that we had a lesbian relationship, which is something that we don't get to see a lot in Lifetime movies, especially having those lesbians live to the end of the movie, which is just in cinema in general is a rarity. But the lesbian 
relationship could also be seen as a titillating, uh, trashy vibe thing. I don't know. It didn't seem that way to me. So for the representation that we're going to talk about in a minute, I think it was pretty good for an LGBTQ plus movie. Now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. So the movie had a good representation. We had seven girls, so of course all those seven girls couldn't be white because I would have just lost my mind. But we did have some good casting here. We had Kalani Elizabeth Rose as Katie, Natalie Malika as Robin, and that's pretty much it, I think. And I think that wraps it up for today's episode. If you'd like more Lifetime Uncorked, you can check out our website, LifetimeUncorked.com. Don't forget to uh, check out our podcast. Now, back from hiatus, we have one new episode currently. Maybe we'll have more at the time that this is released with the Deck the Hallmark podcast and Lifetime Uncorked combining forces. So check that out. It's available on my RSS feed, Lifetime Court, and available on the Deck the Hallmark Check that out. Leave them a rating and a review with emojis, please, so we can get more coming our way. Uh, Don't forget to leave a comment here and subscribe to this channel. Tell all your friends. And if you'd like to donate to our Ko-fi page, you are more than welcome to do that. 